Hey everyone. Tom broke his jaw on his way into the car. It was a complete accident. But it's okay because I'm here and now I rule the review. Ow! God fucking damn it! What the fuck? What? What the fuck do you mean what? You fucking asshole! I didn't do anything. You think you fucking did it, huh? No. What? Look, all right, it was a complete accident. You tripped and fell. I clearly didn't punch you. And so, but hey, now 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 we can review this together. <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! How's it feel? How's it feel? How's Shut it feel? Shut up. Abuse is funny. It's darkly funny, isn't it? Okay, so we just got out of I, Tonya. Not, not Tonya, as I found out. Ugh. I've never I've never seen the name spelled uh, with an O before. Phonetics, man. It works in specific cases. Yeah. Actually, I've never I never heard the name uh, Tanya Harding before this movie. Despite everyone telling me how famous of a story it is, I didn't I didn't know a lick about this movie prior to seeing trailers for it and then seeing this movie. So, went into it completely clean. I actually had to plead ignorance to one of my coworkers because, uh, well, she's very uh, she's very uh, hard on her politics and everything. Stands by her political beliefs. Yeah, and so when I... It's sort of like a breed of women who follow a movement with an F word. I forgot what it was called, though. Regardless, she she was very upset that I was going to see this movie because she thinks that Tanya Harding would be getting uh, money for it. And it's like, how how dare you support someone like that? And I was just like, well, actually, I don't know anything about the scandal or anything. I just went... I'm just going to see it because they were recommending it as a good movie. So... And she's like, oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> and that, yeah, just left you so, so confused. Yeah. So, and after seeing the movie, well, I could definitely see how this kind of took the world by storm in the 90s. I was just a, I mean, I was still just a wee lad back then, but... You were just born when the incident happened. I wasn't even born yet, because he was born in 93, I was born in 94. Um... But yeah, I knew of this incident, uh, well, I follow sports, he doesn't follow it as well, but also, I didn't, uh, I knew Tanya Harding before I knew about the scandal, because I know her from being on the Smoking Guns World's Dumbest series, the World's Dumbest Partiers, uh, Criminals, etc. She was one of the celebrity commentators, and yeah, she seems like a funny person, with... I don't know if it would be intentionally funny. It Well, it probably is. It's a fucking comedy show. But, yeah, that's the only way that I knew her public personality uh, side as opposed to just the, well, not just the, but the iconic Olympic skater with all the talent in the world and all the drive and motivation just constructed with, uh, constructed by the world's worst people. Everything, but this movie, with its aim of being a biopic, does cover the targets of uh, of this tragic person, as well as the toxic relationships that do mold her into the person that she becomes. But also, does uh, it does give the amount of sympathy that the audience can have to feel bad for this great talent who is just surrounded by by people who seemingly she's close with, but um, it's obvious to see that just everything happening to her is because of life and because because this is what life has dealt her. Life has dealt her pain. She needs to be able to overcome it and become a champion. That That's one thing that carries this movie is it, it is hard-nosed, gritty, and real. Yeah, from from an outward appearance, I mean, I would honestly, if you were if you would have told, described this movie to me and said, "Well, it's a movie of a bunch of really scummy, shitty people," it's a very unpleasant movie, honestly. That's I would have that, said that's one of his character pet peeves. Yeah, I mean, well, this yes, yes and no. I mean, mo, I guess 
it's good when it's done right. It's well, I mean, I, I guess you could say that about anything, but but I mean, like, it's hard for me to get into a movie where everyone's an asshole all the time for everything, and <laughs> but here somehow it works. Like I actually, I actually did enjoy this film. I will, I will happily admit, it is a very unpleasant film, and I can understand people walking away saying, "Well, uh, you know, now I'm just, now I'm just kind of depressed, and you know, I wanna, I wanna go home and hug my mother." <laughs> yeah, everyone, go home and hug your mothers, cause please, you need, you need to thank them for not being Alice and fucking Janney in this movie. Jesus, God. Yeah. And, uh, I hope that woman wins an Oscar though, cause. Even though it's a one-note character, she plays that one-note character into the fucking stratosphere. This this is giving uh, William H. Macy, Frank Gallagher from Shameless, a run for his money. Although while Fra while Frank is pathetic and uh, manipulative, <laughs> um, Lavana Harding, uh, Tanya's mom, she <laughs> she doesn't give two fucking shits about what anybody thinks about her. She just goes by her own code and says fuck you to anybody that doesn't agree with her. And she do at points I was considering what you would analyze meaning like uh, how terrible of a person can she be but uh, but not trying to cross the barrier of being too good at being bad. Yeah. And, ha and having that but would you think that would lead to more of a boring character or a boring performance knowing what's going to come or does that lead to uh, does that lead to a higher dedication to the character well i mean obviously okay with with this being essentially a true you know one of those based on a true story biopics type, uh, yeah those kind of movies you want you want to maintain some level of immersion and I feel like if they were gonna, if if you're gonna go too far with it to the point where she's practically Lady Hitler, uh, it it that at least for me would pull me out of the movie, knowing that I'm not really watching people, I'm watching actors. Actors play characters, poorly written characters at that, or at that point caricatures. Yeah, well, yeah, that <clears throat> that too. And so for me, I think. What keeps me from hating the movie, hating its unpleasantness of all these, like, really scummy people, is that they all wear their shittiness well, and they're all acted very well as well. So, it, I mean, I, I know I know it's, it's just cheap to say, oh, it just works, and it's like, well, why wouldn't it work in other movies? I think because they don't do it right. I mean, I mean, the, the dialogue they're given in this movie feels authentic to a certain degree. Like, like, <laughs> um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I'd be dis disagreeing with that. Although this does this does go uh, portray real life talk really well in that uh, people really love to fucking swear, and apparently people in the '90s really love to yell the word "cunt." I don't know why it's so down, but well, looked down upon now. But eh, times times change. It's a very crash, a crass word uh, yep i don't like it that much but I, if... I really like to reserve it for only for the worst kinds of people so then europeans just use it like crazy yeah but... <laughs> goddamn brits and irish osw i love you don't ever leave me no um but can i say this though yeah is that the unpleasantness i think helps almost draw you into the movie a little bit more because by by and large, this movie is kind of the the underdog story, the rag the rags to riches story, but it, not typical in the slightest, and in, in any regard, it subverts a lot of expectations, in many ways, and in many cases that's that just that just makes it for me a lot more enjoyable too because I've seen this movie, or I've seen I've seen this kind of movie time and time again, and it, you know I usually gauge it on how much am I immersed into the story? Do I believe, do I believe this really happened or do I think it's just romanticized for the, for the screen? This, this one, it, this one does something different in how it's very stylized. It's not, it, <clears throat> the direction in this is fantastic. Yeah. It doesn't, a lot, a lot of these, a lot of these kinds of movies would do their damnedest to keep, keep most of it to, a, to keep a lot of it minimal, in an effort to not 
in an effort to make trick you into thinking you're not really watching a movie. This one, this one wears it on its sleeve and it works because, well, it just make it just makes it a lot more entertaining and it makes it a lot more enjoyable to watch. But it never it never rips me out thinking, well, this is this is all fake and everything. It's God, I, I know I know I'm contradicting myself so much because I because I criticize like the disaster artist, for example, for, for ruining my immersion in in a few areas. But this one, this one never, but that, never breaks it. You also had a lot of background and previous knowledge before watching that movie. You went into I, this dry. That is true. You know, this going into this dry, I can't really say, oh, that that's clearly false or that's that never happened in anything. But even then, for everything that did happen to this movie, I never once thought it's like. Did that really happen, or is the or is it just made up? But this movie does have a safety net to it: unreliable narrators. <laughs> yeah, there's sort of, when we left this movie, I was trying to think about the like connection to other movies that just briefly have periods of characters literally talking to the camera. It happens in Fight Club. It happens once in Goodfellas. Jersey it, Boys. Jersey Boys. It, well, it's also it's almost a staple of Woody Allen movies. But it's just... And not necessarily breaking the fourth wall, just acknowledging that you have an audience, but that also might elevate your, sto uh, your stories... Well, immersion and believability when you're able to literally look at these real people saying, yeah, this is what fucking happened. We had to fucking deal with it. And yeah, everything that happens in this story wise is what well, I want. I don't want to say standard biopic. It's just literally watching the trials and tribulations of this three year old child who starts skating due to a for <laughs> being forced onto the ice by her constantly chain-smoking mother good god but uh yeah just how how the ideas of pressure uh desire dedication and how all of those can still be tested but to but to what varying degree can one person put themselves through in order to achieve what one wants to know as success and tanya margot robbie does a very good job in this. Not necessarily because, she, well, yeah, she's a good actress, but even though I knew the pub, even though I knew who Tanya Harding was, I still ta saw Tanya Harding go through all of this shit. Like, a, one of the most abusive parents I've ever seen, throwing a fucking knife in, in her arm. That, the direction around it, the, the tense relationships the tox the toxicity you can feel it as soon you can feel it as soon as a knife is ripped out from someone's arm with no reaction and no pain just saying yeah what you have done to me is worse than a fucking knife stab <sighs> so where was i going with that oh yeah <laughs> now um but yeah the story it, and it also follows events that actually happen so people know the are gonna know what the outcome is but luckily with this it brings you into it doesn't necessarily just retell you events it brings you into this world where these stupid people these stupid terrible people are forced to commit these actions in order to just to get by tanya the whole now the allegations surrounding the nancy kerrigan incident I'm not 100% sure. I I didn't look into like research or anything. I just know the basics. Kerrigan was assaulted by a mysterious man and there were just connections to Harding. With this, they do some form of uh what would the word for it be? Like the deception so, sort of the unaware deception cuz all of this should just be pinned on one person. The the delusional fat loser who stays with his mom and dad. <laughs> Which, he was one of the funniest parts of this movie. His name yep. is Sean Eckhart. Um, I saw myself in him, except that he had a he had a mustache, not a beard. <laughs> well, it's way back when. You gotta you gotta have the sexy stashes. Uh, although guys never have stashes, they are so creepy, uh, especially the pencil thin mustaches that these guys have. Uh, and well, going back to acting, 
Um, I'm not 100% sure about Sebastian Stan's uh, previous work, but he plays a damn good job of being this nervous wreck of a human who can only rely on his existence to one person and is literally nothing without them. The, and that's just another bylayer to, uh, to Tanya's marriage to his... I can't believe his last name, Galuli. Like, with a last name like Galuli and a face like his, how the hell do you not equal bad news? But her fucking her fucking mom predicted it in the movie, yeah. and again, just examining toxic relationships and how they can how they affect your mind, how they affect your performance, and that's one. That's one of the big points that... That's the only reason Allison Janney is there. Mental toughness, toughen up. You can't take any crap. You, if you want to win, if you want to be the best, you go You go at it and don't take fucking anything. Just go out there, win. And, well, being an athlete, that or the pressure of being your best and doing whatever it takes to be the best that's a real fear and a real anxiety and a re and real pressure that happens on real athletes and it's also a 50 50 swing of what kind of way you're going to be brought up either it, either it's going to be you're from shit and you take shit and you push through shit or you have everything given to you by fed to you by a silver spoon and you have all the advantages in the world and they all just work out for you. But luck luckily the just the character of Tanya being being a fighter, being someone who can take all of this and somehow come out still sane but not but not necessarily getting the end result she wants. But that's also a driving force that keeps her going throughout the entire movie and I'm assuming throughout her regular life. Just Take it, and just take it on the fucking nose. And they actually show a good uh, last image of it, Res just in one image, blood on the, blood on the mat of a boxing ring. You just, you just get back up and leave. You just get back up and leave behind the pain. So yeah, very. And, but this is all. It isn't necessarily just a study or. Like, or just a witnessing of these terrible acts. It's funny. Throughout throughout a lot of this, there are a lot of funny moments. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is due to what well, would you say that the darkness in this is excessive? Well, like I said, there's it is a very unpleasant movie, but it's but not it's, necessarily in the sense that like you yourself are saying, "Oh my God, why am I watching this?" It's just you're it's watching unpleasant acts but learning something from it a a little bit, and I mean occasionally, yes, the movie has its own little dark sense of humor from time to time there's one one of the notably funny moments for me was where they're recapping the early early days of their abusive relationship, and there's a part where um uh, crap! What's the husband's name? Uh, Jeff. 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 Jeff Kaluli. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff. Sa Jeff says something about how she chased him out of the house with a shotgun, <laughs> and and as she's shooting him with the shotgun, she's like, "I never did that." <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, it's it's got it's got its own little dark sense of humor, and you know, some people may may or may not like it. You know, the we joked in the beginning abuse is funny well <laughs> it's very funny if you put the right direction and script on it i mean obviously nothing is sacred you can you can make any anything funny but some people are obviously gonna it, i guess i guess, i think it's gonna depend on people's own experience pretty much yeah obviously i've never i've never dealt with abusive relationships i come from a very stable family uh i don't have a girlfriend. Surprising. <laughs> hey, and don't so, sell, don't sell yourself short. I would um I would never if I if I did though I would never ever touch them that way. That's... And but that uh, but that also does provide curiosity of what does it take for for people to, for these people to do these terrible things. They know that they that these are terrible things, but they're okay with it and they're okay with doing them. That's. <sighs> 
That's what I love so much about just the mind and what makes everyone tick. I would love to examine every single fucking person's brain in this. Yeah. What well, we sort of do, we sort of get that direct analyzation with what well, again Margot Robbie's uh, acting, which she never ever goes over the top. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of room for for an excessive foul mouthed wild card. Mm-hmm. But, have you seen It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Nope. But you know the idea of a wild card, like a personality type. Absolutely. That, that's what that's also the main image that is given to Tanya throughout the entirety just because of her raunchy upbringing because and her foul foul fucking mouth mother is ridiculous. She says what well, she says cunt like two or three times within the first half hour. Yeah. Um, that's partly what makes her that's partly what's make what makes Alice and Janney funny. I want to I want to see like her in like some gritty reboot of the Cinderella story. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, her being the fu- Oh my god. Uh, her being the, the evil, evil stepmother. Step yep. Oh my god. Get the fuck get the fuck back in your fucking tower, you fucking waste of life. <laughs> go talk to your go talk to your fucking animal friends. They're the only people who care about you, you fucking lazy bitch. <laughs> it's you know, again. God normally, damn it, I can't normally can't. I would <laughs> normally I would hate that. I would think, God, why am I watching this? But she does such a fantastic job. Like you said, they own it. They, it's, on, it's on the sleeve. Yeah, and and unlike a lot of other movies, you know, I I think I think that's the other thing too is they know. They know these people are shitty, and they never try to say, well, don't be mad at them because they're, you know, something, you know, tragedy, backstory. So it, it shaped me. Yeah, it's, they, they make it pretty clear. No, these people are shits, and you really shouldn't like them, but it's still just so damn engaging to watch watch the events of this movie unfold with them. And that's the, you know, I think that's the real draw of this movie i think that's what why it's like unpleasantness is is as effective as it is yeah, and for for me that's what draws people again to shows to shows like shameless and just the just the idea of surrounding uh surrounding your world in uncompromising just uncompromising shit and realism uh, the two the two um direct references I had when we were done with this, I was talking with him, were what God, how many times am I gonna say shameless, regardless? That and arrested development because he, okay, at some points the narrative does get a little shaky with wanting to tell a with wanting to tell the entire story of Tanya, but also trying to still fit in everything surrounding the Nancy Kerrigan scandal. But it it work it works well enough in that there's in that they're still keeping the focus on the on the uh on the effects of the actual people as opposed to like getting into controversy or 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 fabrication or romantic or yeah romanticizing it <laughs> the the entire scene where where the assault is made is very well thought out it's very well directed and it, even though you literally know what's going to happen, you just want to keep on watching how this story is going to be unfolded. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the acting the acting's great. Uh, you do believe that these terrible people are doing these terrible things. But, and I was just telling him about my feelings on Margot Robbie. She is a beautiful woman, but she doesn't play to the cliche what well, the realistic cliche of hollywood just taking these beautiful women who have no talent and presenting them as something amazing the megan foxes the jessica beals i don't even want to say kim kardashian cuz she isn't even what well, her reputation is already tarnishing her real look anyway but margot robbie is incredibly talented she she's, she, very, she's very good in this she owns she owns this part and you d- you do not see you do not see Margot Robbie. You see Tanya Harding portray, portrayed as this crazy psychotic. Is she, but, no, uh, is but, she uh, nominated? Possibly. Okay. Um, I want to say yes, but I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, I know Allison fucking Janney is, 
Because she actually, I think she won a uh, Golden Globe for sure for this. Okay. Um, I think. Oh no, Saoirse Ronan uh, beat out uh, beat out Margot Robbie because okay. uh, she did Lady Bird, and then Frances McDormand won Golden Globe for drama. Okay. But yeah, the acting is fantastic in this. It's actually it's actually funny with. I always try and seek out the dark comedies of the 90s, i.e. Pulp Fiction, Fargo, Big Lebowski, and he was actually making connections with Big Lebowski. It while reminded me this. in a in a few places, not the whole not the whole movie, but just, you know, sort of it's uh it's 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 zaniness and it's like spon- spontaneous changes in uh in like the plot and everything. Uh I don't know. It just it just it just reminded me of the Big Lebowski in a few places. But then I also thought Jersey Boys in in a few places too for just how how it went about telling its story with the you know the the they do the thing with the characters staring at the camera and like narrating their own story, but while still in the middle of the events of the story. Yeah, I um I don't know Craig Gillespie's uh, previous work, the director. But he does know he does know how to do damn good tracking shots as well as as well as filming great uh, ice skating action. And don't get me wrong, figure skating is a very uh, tough and physically enduring sport. But I don't know uh, anyone that would say otherwise. Exactly. But uh, there it it is a very niche and uh, secular sport that like people who have done it and who have surrounded themselves with it will will know everything can be engaged by that but for the for the wrong kind of people it's not the most exciting this this makes it exciting it ma- it shows off the technique very well it sh- it shows the endurance and the and the all the practicing that's necessary one of the supposed problems she had with the judges was her choice of music about how she was choosing things like heavy metal or well I guess if Z, I don't think ZZ Top really counts. ZZ, ZZ Top is uh, it's, he- it's, he- not it's heavy, heavy metal. It's heavy rock. Oh, well, it, regardless, it, her her song choices were apparently not not appealing to the judges. But I was thinking to myself, God, if all figure skates had songs like this, I'd be watching it oh, all the time. The, fuck those judges! <laughs> I always uh, her, you know her skating to ZZ Top is fucking amazing. Me and my dad both say the same thing. Uh, the the Metallica song "Blackened" would make an incredible figure skating song. Like we both hmm. we both picture how it would play out in our heads, and like it, you know. Eh. But of course, that that obviously would never happen. But mm. seriously, what's wrong with her music? Right, and that so, those. By were... the way, this whole this whole soundtrack we say we say this about a lot of movies, but we mean it. The soundtrack's pretty damn good. Th- this soundtrack was awesome. Mm-hmm. Gr- great, uh, great rock songs. Uh, also good, cla- good forms of classical music when it's necessary for like the in- for the intense scenes. But also, yeah, good soundtrack. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Fuck. God damn it, I lost my train of thought. Well, I'll just let me let me just finish off my thing with saying that, you know, it it, it keeps itself from being typical at every turn. Like the acting is is far above average for a, for a movie like this. Its style lends itself to being a nice fresh take on this sort of, you know, underdog biopic. Its unpleasantness helps draw draw you into the story rather than having me hate it only because the acting's good, the writing's good, you know, er- everything about it just works. And yeah, overall, I I didn't go into this expecting a whole lot, but you know, from the recommendations I got, I I gave it a watch and I was very pleasantly surprised. A very good movie. If you can if you can handle the unpleasantness, which believe me, I. I understand completely if you can't, but for someone like me who normally would hate it, I actually still came out enjoying it. So I'd recommend giving it a chance. At some points, okay, part of me wants to think that some of the stuff in this is tame, but but question for you, would the... Fuck Hollywood's goddamn late release dates. This was released uh, with many 
Oscar candidates like last the last weekend of 2017. Right. It sucks that we're only being able to see it now. Well, the but same what, thing happened last year with Moonlight. Would this crack your top? Would this crack a top ten or top five? I don't know. It's it's hard to say because there were a lot. It, I mean, there were there were fight so many fights for for my top five last year. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of good movies. At, I no doubt would have probably given it an honorable mention if it, you know, my honorable mention probably would have been longer than my damn list. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, nonetheless. I, I did, I did definitely enjoy this, but it, <clears throat> I'm not saying this is bad at all. It's still really good, but I'm not 100 percent sure if it's uh, if it's as amazing as it. As some people have made it out to be, only because I I was a little bit picky of some of the excessiveness, some of it, some of the dialogue and some of the scenarios just seem way too. Okay, the the stuff surrounding the judges is beyond over the top. Like they're sort of being blatant with their message of, oh, we only care about presentation, we care about marketability, we care about how you look. That seemed a little too obvious, and unfortunately, it does play a major major role in in Tanya's motivation of being this just cynical no bullshit uh, winner Surpri surprisingly despite all its style and despite all its uh you know like mm, let's say occasional zaniness I was I was talking about it never it never uh rips me out of the movie and never you know I I talked a bit about immersion and keeping you or keeping me from thinking well this is just some kind of hollywood romanticized version of some real life story it never it never does that and that's uh you know that's quite an accomplishment for a movie uh and for that you know it's it's better than it's better than a lot of a lot of them i i've seen but i i absolutely understand what you're saying i i do when you when you say that some some of the messages can come across as heavy-handed that like it like it's made it like that feels made for the movie and as i said before as someone who has absolutely despised movies for being so scummy and unpleasant if it if it gets too much for you i get that but the scumminess will never ever like be too much for me i'm well, I liked I liked the terrible people from Don't Breathe, but uh... <laughs> oh, that's right. I guess yeah. yeah I suppose I, she didn't she didn't rob a rob a blind man. In which case you'd be like, man, <laughs> she is so cool. Why didn't she rob my house? I would have given her everything I own and a complimentary motorboat for the road. Shut the fuck up, prude. But uh, but yeah. It wasn't the. It wasn't necessarily the scumminess. It was just some. At some points, the over-the-top nature could could get distracting. And yeah, the, I saw you checking your phone, what well, phone or watch or whatever. This is re this is really really long. Well, well I, no, I was I was checking my phone because someone was texting me, uh, or, what, or my my phone wouldn't stop vibrating, so I mm -hmm. had to make sure it wasn't something important. Okay. Not, not that I thought this movie was overly long. I I'd feel bad if I said this wouldn't make my top ten. It def it well like you. It would absolutely make an honorable mention. Right. This was absolutely better than a lot a lot of the movies that I actually did uh, give honorable mentions. Well, particularly uh, Ragnarok, Kong. Well, obviously, this is gonna fucking be better than a damn monster movie. But. Uh, it it is it is really really good. It is it is really entertaining. It what? yeah. That's the other thing. When when you think of Oscar movies, a lot of people think they're going to be boring by trait. That's just going to be a because lot because it's drama. Yeah, it's all you want to see them at their craft. It's all it's you, all talking. It's all just just uh, you know actors being actors. Not that there aren't merits to those movies. I don't want to I don't want to say that. But that's what that's what I mean when I say that this movie's style really really elevates it above most movies of this caliber that and people absolutely love domestic abuse child abuse uh f physical assault uh people bashing <laughs> bashing doors in and people just love overall stupidity these ugh. yeah that's i guess that's another thing i like i do like about this movie is that everyone in some way or another gets their comeuppances 
So yep. that can that can really tremendously help like when characters are so shitty and you would normally hate them but it's not like they come out the other side clean and like, in, in particular galuli his well, his stupid stupid buddy and his two cronies yeah they're all morons and that was what reminded me of Arrested Development. Just everyone having their head too far up their own ass, they can't see the light of day. Especially the fat guy saying, I'm an expert in counterterrorism. You just feel the loserness oozing from him. But again, he was the... F he was more funny than than Lavana Lavana Harding. But nobody is going to forget Lavana Harding ever. Jesus. Uh, Jesus can't save her. So, uh, then again, she don't give a fuck. Hashtag Lavanya Harding don't give a fuck. Don't do that. Eh, she might be dead soon already. Eh, if you are, whatever. If not, well, they would have told us that at the end of the movie. Probably. So, that's I, Tonya. Tanya. Damn it! <laughs> uh, so I thought you learned. I didn't learn shit. And so sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't learn shit because you're surrounded in a world of shit. So, as long as you come out fighting on the other side, keep at it. So, what do you think we're gonna see next? No fucking clue. Mostly because if it's still available by the time we get around to seeing another one of these movies, and if and probably as if nothing will come out by then, uh, you want to see The Shape of Water? Yes. Okay. He hates Pan's Labyrinth. But I love the Hellboy series. You mean the two movies? That counts. Damn definitions. Whatever. It's cold as fuck. We fogged up the car. Yeah. This is our first, not only our first review of 2018, but the first review in your brand new car. Truck, technically, but again, definitions. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, you know it's cold when I'm wearing a fucking hat. <laughs> I wanted to get him another hat for a Christmas present, but he said, no, fuck that. I want a video game. I want something actually useful. Well, of course. I Really, when do I wear hats? Rarely. Right. Only when I tell you to. Well, I suppose, yeah. Or, or for photo ops for ghetto movies. You know, the very first, <laughs> the very, very first uh, one of these videos we ever did, back when we did uh, Man of Steel, I wore my, my stupid one-up one up hat, and I actually started the video by saying, I normally don't even wear hats, and I just threw it, I just threw, threw it off for the whole video. Uh, what? That's a third of the videos that, what, of me in the videos. Yeah. Particular, particularly the best and worst list. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we'll throw you a curveball. We're wild cards too. Eh, fuck it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Later. See ya.